everyone, Amelia Roberts here, and today I am diving into whiteboards specifically for my fellow educators. Before we begin, are you planning on taking a certification exam? You need to check out Cert XP. It is my absolute favorite way to learn and test my technical skills for my certification exams. You just need to visit prag.works slash Amelia40 and you'll save 40% on your on-demand learning subscription and get access to over a hundred different courses. Let's head over to our video. Whiteboard is an app in the Microsoft 365 suite. Many people don't know all about it, but I specifically love it for all of my teacher friends. I am a former teacher and I use Microsoft Whiteboard on a daily basis in my classroom. Let me go ahead and show you some of the different aspects of Whiteboard and how you can use it to your advantage in the classroom. Now, just a heads up, there is an app version of Microsoft Whiteboard, but there is also a web based version of Microsoft Whiteboard. I am going to be using the web-based platform for my demonstration, but you are welcome to use whichever one works best for you. So to start this demonstration, I am going to be building off of what I already created, my segment edition postulate whiteboard, and I'm gonna start adding some content. I'm gonna start with a PDF. So I'm gonna go down to my ellipses at the bottom. I'm gonna click that more options, and then I am going to go to documents. Once I select documents, it is going to launch my OneDrive. You can only import um, a PDF or PowerPoint document as an image from your OneDrive here in the Microsoft Whiteboard online interface. If you have the desktop option, you are able to pull from your on-prem data file for this. But I'm gonna open up my documents. It's gonna bring up my OneDrive and I'm going to find my class files. Once I find and open up my class files folder, I am going to choose this segment add PDF. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and open it up. It's going to give me a preview of the entire PDF. And from here, I can either select to add all of the PDF in, or I can bring in individual pages. I only wanna bring in my first and second page so I'm only gonna select both of those. The bottom is going to say insert two of 10 pages. That's what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. So now you can see my PDF has been brought in as images on my whiteboard. I don't wanna be able to move these too much once I get into my inking and drawing section. So I'm gonna to go to more and I'm gonna lock these into place. Best practice is to lock your images into place. You don't want them moving around if you choose to use this as a presentation time. So if you're working collaboratively, maybe you wanna keep everything unlocked so you can move things around. Um, but I prefer to lock my PDFs and images into place in case I um, accidentally move them because we don't want we don't want to move it too much if we like where it is. So next I am going to go ahead and add an image to this. And as you can see, I can zoom in and zoom out. When I'm presenting, I like to be up nice and close, but while I'm organizing, I do like to be a little bit further away so that I can see a little bit more of my canvas while I'm organizing it. I'm gonna head down to my more options and I am going to add an image this time. Now, when you select image, it gives you two options. You can either upload an image from your computer or you can go to Bing images. We are gonna select an image from our class folder. So go ahead and pick the upload option and I am going to find my SAP picture. SAP stands for segment edition postulate. So in your class files, you're gonna choose that SAP and open it on up. And now we have our picture in, it says segment edition postulate, and I'm gonna move it to right below, I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit, I'm gonna put it right below my PDF right here. And once again, it's an image, so I am going to hit more, and I'm gonna lock this into place again. So now I have added a PDF and an image that of my choosing into my whiteboard. I'm gonna add two more things to this whiteboard for content. Um, the next I'm going to add is actually a video. So what I need to do is I need to go get a video URL first. So we have a few options here. I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to choose this one right here, this RST. 
I am just going to right click. I'm going to copy the link address. You can choose any of these segment edition postulate videos if you want. It is completely up to you. And then I'm going to go back to my whiteboard. I'm going to go down to my more options. And this time I am going to select a video, an online video. So now it's asking for the URL. I'm going to go ahead and paste my URL in there. It's going to bring up a preview of my video for me to see. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit insert. Now I have my video in here. You can put it wherever you want on your canvas. I'm going to just slide it right here next to my um, segment edition postulate picture. You can change the size of it if you want. This, the video, I am not going to lock this in. The reason I am not going to lock this on here is because if you lock it, you cannot play it or even follow the link to get to it. So I'm going to leave this unlocked on my canvas. You're also once again able to zoom in and out. So if you are doing a presentation of this, you can zoom in and hit play or you can stay zoomed out if you're doing other parts of your canvas. You're going to add a link on here. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to get a link. I'm going to hit my um, plus tab up here and I am going to go to Khan Academy. I'm going to search for segment edition postulate. I want to provide a little additional resource for my students on here that they can um, obtain and I am going to choose this equation practice with segment addition. So my second one down. I'm going to go ahead and copy this link and then I'm going to go back to my whiteboard. I'm going to go to my more options and I am going to select link. So now I'm just going to paste this link right here and I'm going to insert it onto my canvas. It's going to come up as almost like a little tile. All right, a little tile. So if I share this whiteboard with my students, they are able to have this on here. Once again, I am not going to lock it on. I am going to leave it unlocked so that it can be clicked and followed. If I lock it, I cannot click it and follow it. I can only just see it right there on my whiteboard. Now we're going to add a few other features that Microsoft Whiteboard has available. And one of those is one of my favorites, and that is the sticky note. So the sticky note is down here at the bottom. And when I select this, I have a couple options. I have the option to just put an individual sticky note if I want. And then I also have the option of this sticky note grid where it can add multiple at one time in a grid like pattern. For this example, I am only going to select the single sticky note. I'm going to select blue because it kind of goes with um, the overall look of my um, whiteboard. So I'm going to go ahead and select a blue sticky note. And then all you do is you go where you want on your canvas and you click and it will appear. You can move it around as well. And you can type in here too. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock this on here and I'm going to Oh no, what's that? That is correct. You cannot type in it if it is locked. So you do need to leave it unlocked to type. But once you're done typing, if you do not want anything more added to it, I suggest locking it. If you're using it in collaboration with somebody else, then keep it unlocked. So what I'm going to put here is I am going to put the student's homework for that night. So I'm going to put homework and I'm going to put page 127, numbers 1 through 10. We don't want to overwhelm them too much. And now I'm done typing and I don't have anybody collaborating with me on this particular whiteboard. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it now. So now my sticky note is added to my whiteboard. I do want to add something else over here as well. I want to add a little reminder for my students. They tend to forget that I don't like cell phones in class. So I'm going to add a shape. And the shape I'm going to add, I'm going to choose this like pentagon because it kind of feels like a stop, kind of looks like a stop sign to me. Unfortunately, there's not a hexagon in here. Um, but I am going to pick this pentagon and I am going to go ahead and stamp it on. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that it's kind of the same size as my post-it. And I can actually type in this shape. I actually want to make this more of a um, 
apparent color here. So I'm gonna change it to a kind of stop sign color red. And I am going to put stop. Make sure your cell phone is put away. Because I wanna remind them, hey, don't get that cell phone out, put it away now before we get started. And I'm gonna go ahead and lock this on here as well because I don't wanna move it or change it at all. So now that I have added these few things, there is one more thing I want to add and that is just a little practice example for what we're going to do. So I'm just gonna scroll down here. I want to add a line segment on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this double arrow and I'm going to draw this on here. So double arrows are really nice. You can draw them um, freehand on here and it will make you a nice pretty straight line with two arrows on the end. You can change the color. I'm gonna change mine to blue to kind of match our theme that's going on. And once again, I'm going to lock it into place because I don't want it to move. Now the example I'm gonna do, I need some text for. I'm gonna call this end A. I'm gonna call the middle here B, so I'm using my text tool. All you simply do is choose the text tool and then select where you want to type and add those texts there. So as I said, I went down to this add text down here. I'm going to click it. And then you will see the text cursor pop up. So I can go ahead and click wherever I want a little text box. It, when I do that, this options bar comes up so I can change the text style if I want it more handwritten, professional or simple. I can change the color if I want. So if I want this to be blue, I can make it bold or italicized or underlined. I'm gonna make it a little bold this time. And I'm gonna type AB plus BC equals and then the class is going to answer what that equals. I do not want this to change. So once again, I am going to lock it into place. So we have add, added quite a few things to our whiteboard here and we've explored many different features on here. The one thing we haven't really looked at is our actual drawing tool. So we have our, P, our um, pen down here, our inking tool. If I click on this, I have a variety of options that come up. Now those options include, you have three different pens that you can use. So you can have these each as different colors if you want and switch between them as you are working. You also have this highlighter tool, which is a slightly transparent and thicker writing utensil. You also have this pen right here, and you have your eraser. So you have a variety of options down here. Let's go ahead and select our pen, and let's change our color. Let's go with a nice blue. You can also change how thick you want this to be on a variety of levels. I'm gonna go with a nice number three here, and then you can also change the transparency as well. So let's go ahead and draw a little bit on here. I'm gonna zoom in on my PDF right here. I do highly suggest when you are using this tool not to use a mouse. If you have the ability to use a stylus, unfortunately I don't um, in this case, but if you have a stylus or even one of those drawing pads that you can connect to your computer, this is, those are great tools to use at this time and they sync really well with whiteboard to get the best of your ability. So if I wanted to draw on this and solve this problem with my students, so this says JL equals 5X plus 2, so I know all of this is 5x plus 2, and it wants me to find JL, I can easily write in here part plus part equals whole, so I have my whole, which is 5x plus 2, and then I have equals, and then I know part plus part, so 27 plus 3x minus 1, all right? So I can solve this problem right here with my students. I can ask them what next steps are. If you are using something like a smart board, the kids can go up and write on the board as well when you have this up. Um, it's a great feature to have to be able to use whiteboard in your classroom or even during presentations. If you want an interactive moment, 
you can write here on this. If I make a mistake, so say my student, oh, you add one and you add one. Actually, that's not what you do. Let's go back and erase that. You can use your eraser tool. Now you have two options in your eraser tool. You can erase a partial stroke, which is what you just saw, or you can erase an entire stroke. So if you go ahead and go, I actually don't want any of this. If you glide it over it while holding down on your mouse, it will delete it all. So these are a few options you have. And once again, you can change these pins to a variety of colors to have. You also have this nice rainbow pen that I just, the kids seem to love, but it changes colors and is a little sparkly as it goes across. They always think that one is a little fun. So if you want to add a little fun to your presentation, you are able to do that. Um, anytime you want to move throughout your canvas, though, notice that it is drawing as I'm turning it down. You do have to go back and choose your cursor and then you will be able to move and then you can zoom in and out as well. If I wanted my students to come down here, students, what is A, B plus B, C? Oh, Miss Roberts, it is A, C. Then you can draw that in, or you could even type that in if you wanted to. That is completely up to you. I hope this demonstration and information about Microsoft Whiteboard was helpful for you today. If you would like to learn more about Microsoft Whiteboard and all that it can do, head on over to PragmaticWorks on-demand learning platform. I have an entire course all about Microsoft Whiteboard and everything it can do. Don't forget to use Amelia40 at checkout. See you next time.